Hey, so this is Joe, and this is the fifth video in the 11th chapter of Stuart's Calculus. We're going to be talking about power series. So power series are a series that is actually a function of x. And so it takes, a power series broadly takes this form. So we've got some coefficient that is a sequence in terms of m, and, that you mul and by that you multiply some x minus an a, which, is, which will be a constant, to the power of n. And this a can be whatever you want. It can be a 0, it can be a 1, it can be a 5 halves, um, whatever. And you say that, and you name a power series based on what it's about, what the a is. So you say it's a power series about blah, about a, about 1, about 2, um, something of that ilk. And then another important thing to note is a power series, unlike a lot of the other series we were dealing with, starts at n equals 0 instead of n equals 1. Um, and that's a convention that uh, mathematicians use for a reason that we're going to figure out in the next video that will become apparent um, when we start talking about Taylor series and Maclaurin series. And so if we were to expand out this series, we would get c sub 0, and then it would be x minus a to the, to the 0, which would be a 1. Um, so plus c sub 1 times x minus a to the, to the first power, plus c sub 2 times x minus a the second power, so on and so forth. And so, since we've been talking a lot about convergence and divergence, you might be guessing that that's, the, that's what we're going to be talking about next, is how we figure out if one of these series diverges or converges. But because it's a function of x, and this x can be anything, it, we can, when we change this x, um, it changes whether the series diverges or converges. So there is it can be an interval over which it converges, um, an interval of x over which it converges. There can be a, it could converge for all x, it could converge for no x, or it could just converge when x equals a. So those are um, our three options, and uh, I'm going to write those out, and then I'm going to tell you exactly what an interval of convergence and a radius of convergence are, which are going to be important for solving. All right, so here we've got our three possibilities for the convergence of a power series. Either the power series will converge when x is a, or it'll converge for all values of x's, or there will be some val number r um, th for which the series converges when the absolute value of x minus a is less than r, and it'll diverge when that's greater than r. Um, and then we have, and so based on that, we have two things that we'll need to find um, when we show when a power series converges. We need to show the radius of convergence, which is going to be the r described up here. Um, and that r means, what it implies is the distance away from a of x at which the series converges. So the value of x, um, yeah. And then the, the, the interval of convergence is the interval of x over which the series converges. So if we have a case where the uh, power series converges for all value of x, the radius of convergence is going to be infinity, and the interval of convergence is going to be um, uh, the open interval from negative infin infinity to infinity. Um, and then number three, it's pretty self-explanatory what the radius of convergence is, and then when you get the radius, you can add add that radius to a and then subtract it from a, and you'll get your interval of convergence. So. Um, the best way to kind of understand and illustrate these concepts is just to do some practice with it. So I've got a couple problems that we're going to do, and we're going to find um, when a power series converges, um, and we're going to find its radius of convergence and its interval of convergence. So let's go. All right, so we're going to do number six on page 770 in your book, and we're given the series, um, the power series, uh, starting at n equals zero, as would be expected, to infinity. Uh, and it's an alternating series, negative 1 to the n times x to the n over n squared. So for most um, power series, when you're going to be finding the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence, you're going to want to use the root test for a couple reasons. First off, when you come down to finding the limit, that's going to be some, some expression um, times an x minus an a. Uh, first off, the, the, pa the, root, uh, sorry, the ratio test already has a stipulation that um, when the absolute value of some limit is less than 1, the series con absolutely converges. So interval of convergence, radius of convergence is going to be dealing with absolute convergence. So that's one reason to use the ratio test. The other is we have an absolute value of some value that's that, that needs to be less than 
um, some value 1. Or when, when there's a coefficient, when we do some algebra, it'll, it could become some different value. Um, and that kind of is similar to the setup that we need to find um, for finding a radius of convergence, x minus a, some absolute value is less than some r. So because the ratio test will get us down to, to an inequality like this, um, it's generally the, the first test that you want to use when you're finding the radio, radius of um, convergence and intervals of convergence. Also, for this particular power series, since it's alternating, um, we really want to make sure that we're dealing with absolute convergence. And um, as we learned in the previous video, the ratio test does just that. So that is the test we're going to use. So we've got to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a to the n plus 1 over a to the n. And it's the absolute value, so we can ignore that um, plus 1. So we're going to get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared times n squared over x to the n. Now we can expand this out. We're going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of x times x to the n times n squared. And then we're going to get n squared plus 2n plus 1 times x to the n. And so these x to the n's are going to cancel out. And we're going to get the limit as n approaches infinity. Um, of x times n squared, n squared plus 2n plus 1. And now, um, when we plug in infinity here, we're going to get an infinity over an infinity, so that means that we can use um, L'Hopital's rule. So we're going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of 2nx over 2n plus 2. And we still get our indeterminate form there when we plug in infinity. So we can go down and apply L'Hopital's rule once more. We're going to get 2x over 2. And so that limit will just be 2x over 2. And by the ratio test, we know that this converges when the absolute value of that function is less than 1. We're going to have to find um, uh, what x needs to be, what x can be, the, um, in order to, to satisfy this inequality. And so, because this 2 over 2 is really just a 1, we've got the absolute value of x is less than 1. So, that means that our radius of convergence is equal to 1. And since up here, um, this is a power series about 0, since we've got an implied x minus 0 right there, um, to find the interval of convergence, all we need to do is add the radius to the a. So we do 0 plus 1, we get a 1 for the upper limit, we get a negative 1 for the lower limit, and that, and remember this has to be open because uh, when we plug in these values for x, um, it'll make this expression equal 1 and not be less than 1. So this has to be an open interval. Um, and that is the interval of convergence. We can test that. We put in a 1 for x here, that's 1. Put it in a negative 1, that's also 1. So um, that is our interval and our radius of convergence. Um, so that was a pretty kind of straightforward version of one of these problems. Um, now let's go do a slightly more complicated one. All right, so now we're going to do number 14, and it asks us to find both the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence of this power series about zero right here. Um, and so it's alternating, um, and it's a power series, so we're going to have to. So we're going to be using the ratio test once again. So we find the limit as n approaches infinity of a um, sub n plus one. So we add one to all the n's in here, and it's the absolute value. So we can ignore um, that negative one. So we'll get x to the two times n plus one plus one over. 2 times n plus 1 plus 1 factorial times 2n plus 1 factorial over x to the 2n plus 1. So we can simplify that and we will get x to the 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 3 factorial and then that's still the 2n plus 1 factorial, and that's x to the 2n plus 1. So now we can once again simplify this and use kind of the properties of factorials so that we'll be able to cancel things out. And so that will give us the limit as n approaches infinity of x cubed times x to the 2n over 
2n plus 1 factorial times 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 3 times x times x to the 2n and then we'll keep our 2n plus 1 factorial. So we can see our 2n plus 1 factorials cancel out, our x to the 2n's cancel out, and what we're left with is the limit as x approaches infinity, uh, sorry, not x, n approaches infinity of, and then one of these x's is going to cancel out, so it's going to be an x squared um, over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 3. And when we plug in infinity here, we're going to get a zero, an infinity in the denominator and damn, an x squared up top. So that means that this limit is always going to be equal to 0, and that's less than 1. So that, because the limit always equals 0, independent of whatever x is, x could be 5 million, and this limit would still be 0. That means that it converges for all x. Um, it converges for all x. So that means that our radius of convergence is going to be infinity, and our interval of convergence is going to be negative infinity to infinity. So that's that problem, and we're going to do one more um, slightly complicated one, uh, and then uh, that'll be kind of it in terms of um, the different kind of problems that you'll need to solve um, when finding the radius and intervals of convergence of a power series. Alright, so now we have to solve, we're going to solve number 18, which asks us to find the radius and the interval of convergence of this um, power series uh, about negative 1. Now don't let this fool you just because there's a plus. It's not about 1, because remember the form is x minus a. So this is a power series about um, a equals negative 1. And so, once again, we're going to use the ratio test. That's the best test for um, dealing with intervals of convergence. Um, so, we're going to find the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 times x plus 1 to the n plus 1 over 4 to the n plus 1, and then we're going to get 4 to the n over n times x plus 1 to the n. And so now we're going to need to simplify this. Uh, that bar shouldn't be there, that doesn't really make any sense. And we're going to get n plus 1 still, and then we're going to get x plus 1 times x plus 1 to the n times our 4 to the n. All that over a 4 times 4 to the n times an n and times our x plus 1 to the n. So we can see we're going to cross out our 4's to the n's, we're going to cross out our x plus 1's to the n, and we're left with the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 times x plus 1 times 4n, oh, over 4n, sorry. And uh, right now we can use L'Hopital's rule because we plug in infinity there and we're going to get an infinity over and infinity. So when we use L'Hopital's rule, we're going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of the derivative of this is just its it is 1 and then its coefficient, which is x plus 1. So we're going to get our x plus 1 up there, and then this is going to become a 4 down there. So that means that this limit is equal to x plus 1, and it's the absolute value of x plus 1. And in order for that to converge, for um, our series to converge, we need that absolute value of x plus 1 to be less than, oh sorry, it's the absolute value of x plus 1 over 4, that, that, that over 4 stays. Um, and so we need the absolute value of that expression to be less than 1. So we can multiply our 4 over, that doesn't um, bother our absolute value that sign. So we're going to get the absolute value of x plus 1 is less than 4. So what we need to think is, okay, if we put an x in, if we put a 3 in for x, well first off, we know that um, because we have this inequality here, our r is going to be that 4. Remember, because we have the, the inequality x minus a less than r. And so we've got that same four da form down here, so our r is going to be equal to 4. And remember the rule that to find the interval of convergence, all you do is you add and subtract the radius from the a, and our a is negative 1. So when we add 4 to negative 1, 
we're going to get a 3, and that's going to give us our upper limit. When we subtract 4 from negative 1, we're going to get a negative 5, which is our lower limit. And so that's our interv interval of convergence. We can verify that by plugging in for this value. When we plug in these limits, we should get a 1. We 3 plus 1 is 4 over 4, that's 1, that looks good. Um, negative 5 plus 1, that's a negative 4 over 4, but the absolute value makes that a 1. Um, positive 1, and that's 1, so that looks good. That's our interval of convergence, and that is our radius of convergence. And um, that is just about the most complicated problem you're going to need to solve in terms of finding radii of convergence and intervals of convergence. So that's our video. Thanks for watching, um, and stay tuned for the next one. It's really, uh, really exciting. It's going to be about um, Taylor series and McLaurin series. So stay tuned for that. Thanks.